So yesterday, some friends of mine told me, hey, you should buy this game and we'll play it multiplayer. It'll be great. And so I bought it and we played for several hours and I was addicted. They got off and I continued to play for a little while. Yeah. So anyways, I am now addicted to this game and I liked it so much that I think I want to play it more. <laughs> I can't wait for our next play session. So I decided it might be kind of fun to go ahead and record this and I'll go ahead and post it on my channel. It's the love child of Factorio and Creeper World. Well, at least I know what Factorio is. All right, so I'm thinking what this is going to be is it's going to be a let's play. My definition of a let's play is just playing a game like through that you have not played before. So it's just like casual, just playing the game uh, versus a walkthrough, which is what I'm mostly known for, which is like explaining how everything works. Now, I am I have played some of this game, so I am going to be talking about my thought process and what I'm planning to do and all that stuff and uh, and give you some tips along the way just because that's kind of how I roll. I like to think through things and I'm a very intellectual person. So uh, that, that will be more similar to the regular content that I have on my channel. But anyways, um, so even though I'm calling it a let's play, it's probably more like a walkthrough for most people, I guess, uh, just because that's what I'm known for. Anyways, this game is pretty cool. Um, one thing to note about it, though, is it is fully released and everything, but it is um, still in development. Um, the developer is still working on that. Um, and a, one quick comment about that, too, is he does actually have this available on his website. So if you go to this website right here, this is the developer's name, I guess, dot itch dot io mindustry or whatever, mindustry, mindustry, however you want to pronounce this. So you can get this game here on the computer and you can actually download it for free and then pay some money if you want to just to be nice So I would recommend that you support the developer This is an awesome game Especially if you watch this and it seems kind of fun or you do just go ahead and get it for free And then you decide you like it after that please buy it because that's uh that paying for it is what allows him to make these things and then if you like it then he'll make more games you know what i mean so you're just supporting it and creating more games that you like so it's just a good thing um anyways another thing about this i have heard that supposedly it's on android as well um so you can get it on the google play store actually i believe i haven't really looked at that so much yeah on itunes or whatever or the apps app store on Mac or whatever. So, um, yeah, I've seen, I actually watched some YouTube videos of this a little bit, and apparently there is a mobile version of this game, I guess. I haven't actually, like, looked it up on my store itself, but, um, apparently it's a thing. So just know that too, which is cool. But otherwise, this is also on Steam, and kind of the nice thing about that is actually you can totally, um, play with other people, so you can invite them to your friends list, so you just, like, pop people up, and, uh, that works really good, so you can invite them to play. I'm actually not entirely sure how that works, but uh, I know you can do it through Steam. You send somebody an invite while you're in the middle of a match, and uh, that works well. All right, as soon as you start in this game, you'll automatically start in the tutorial, but if you want to skip the tutorial for whatever reason, and you're like, you just don't want to go through all this stuff, you can press escape and then do quit. This will take you out of out of the tutorial into the main menu. So now you're finally actually in the menu of the game. Automatically the game starts you in the tutorial is what happens as soon as you launch the game. So if you want to get out of that, that's how you do that. And you can always retake the tutorial by either going to play tutorial or you can also do it under settings game tutorial. I don't know why they have multiple set. This this game is still in development even though it's like it's officially released. He's still adding features. For example, there is only music for some sections of the game and there's not a lot of sound effects. Basically just enemies have sound effects, but all of your stuff does not. Um, is what I've noticed. And the music, likewise, there's only a couple songs in the game. A lot of times the rest of the game is silent. I may end up in post-editing. I might, like, put some other music in here. I'm thinking, like, the FTL soundtrack, just because it's kind of in theme. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I might do that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tutorial, and I'll try and... There's a couple things they don't talk about in the tutorial. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, one of the reasons why you would want to is because, if you go to the campaign right now, we, on we only have... If you go to the tech tree down here, there's only five things that we have available to us right now. So we really don't have a lot of access to stuff. Now you can spend launched resources to purchase upgrades. Now these typically require the same resource that it costs to build them, or like yeah, the thing that it costs to research it is what it costs to build. So if I click on this for example, so here's a junction for example, what does it cost? It costs one copper to build. So the research for it probably costs copper too. So this one for example costs copper, so if I click it I actually do start, this is actually kind of a funny thing, I haven't even started the tutorial and I can already, I already start off with just 50 copper just straight up is what they give you when you load up the game. So I can already buy a, a router. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. What I was trying to show though is if I click the router, it shows the cost for it is three copper. So just commenting that it costs, all the research costs the same thing that it would use, like so for example this costs, I need a little bit of graphite in order to purchase this, but it also 
uses a little bit of cop uh, graphite, probably. Yeah, see, it costs copper and graphite to build it as well in game. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So point being, the reason I explain all that is to say that we have just started and we don't have a lot of resources. A lot of these cost copper and lead. Um, and those would be very handy even for the first mission. So you can just do the first mission of the campaign, however then that means enemies are spawning and stuff like that. For the tutorial, it's super easy. You have almost no enemies to deal with at all, so it's very, very easy. Um, and you can hang out as long as you want and get a whole bunch of copper and lead to get the research that you would get in the tech tree. So it actually is quite to your advantage to probably get all this lead stuff anyways. Like, I can't get that because it's silicone, but all like this the distributor. Um, the sorter, for example, this bridge conveyor, you can get all these kind of things, the copper walls, graphite press. So the graphite press will allow you to get graphite, and then you can start getting these these next items, like I was just looking at the scatter, or scorch. I could get scorch because then I have access to graphite. Anyways, you could do that, it's be really a struggle because you have no good items at all in the first mission. So, I do recommend you play through the tutorial also, just it shows you a lot of controls. There's a lot of weird little nuances, so you welcome to ministry. You can begin again by mining copper, move your dude over by pressing WASD. So WASD is movement on your keyboard. Uh, mine some copper. So all you have to do is left click on this and it'll start loading copper into the base. Now one thing you can do is you can actually left click on the base and it'll show you how many resources you have. It's one thing I don't really like. Like you can see when you're covering over an object in your crafting menu down here in the bottom right, you can see how many resources you have and also what the cost is. So this duo tower costs 11 copper, for example. And you can click on other tabs to access different things. So this is drills. I go to drills, I have a copper drill, cost four to make. So what you want to do is, I want to just point this out real quick, you'll notice that how many like copper veins it's over top of will determine how much units of copper it's producing. So this one, for example, produces nine because there's only one block there. There's two blocks here, gives you 18. All four gives you 37, or 0.37 per second. So you can go ahead and click these. One thing I like to do, especially at the very beginning, is I like to manually drill like this. I just left, you can right click, it cancels. I right click to cancel, so like this, for example. I was drilling. I was selecting this, I right clicked to cancel building drills, but also canceled my drilling is what just happened there. Anyways, um, what I like to do is I drill, I manually drill anyways, so I'm getting resources from this while I'm building. So, you might as well. So this, I really, really, really recommend this at the very beginning because you always start off with like no copper at all, and this costs copper to build a drill. So if you're drilling at the same time, you're getting the resources you need to build the drills that you're in the middle of doing, that makes sense. So I really do think it's a, it's a huge advantage to um, go ahead and do that. So what I'm doing here is like for example, I'm, my goal is it is more efficient You want to get it on sets of four, but more so like if you have the resources for it Anyways, if it's not a bad thing as far as the total amount of resources you're spending right now You want to touch every single chunk of uh, of Copper so for example, this is a, a pretty efficient way of doing it because or, well not efficient as far as the amount of resources I spent to build the drills I guess because this is only one block on some of these but the nice thing about this is I, what I did is notice that I have to have a conveyor touching these things in order for it to get the resources. So this, for example, will get all the resources from here, from all three, all of these guys, these four right here. Then these two are not touching anything so far. But if I do like this, meow, now these guys are reaching stuff. So that's why I can place it, I can place this one offset like this, so I can still have a conveyor touching these inner ones, and that way they're still producing resources. Uh, but anyways, that way I can actually use some of these little stragglers, like this one for example, how there was some right here. That's why I can place something either right here or right here, either way. Uh, but I can't place it like that because then this middle one is not getting anything, and this one has four on it, so if I sacrifice it by doing that, then this one is not producing anything, and that's bad. So anyways, um, doing something like that is great. Um, Mining manually is inefficiently, use drills instead. Click on the drill tab on the bottom right, select a mechanical drill and place it on a copper vein. Each vein has different stats. Each drill can only get certain things. So I will eventually have better drills and they will allow me to get uh, better ore. Uh, something else you can do, you can place conveyors. Um, the If you click, so like right now it's going right. If I click and then drag, it'll change the direction. Which is a little inefficient, like this for example, I can draw over the, the conveyors I've already built, it'll rebuild it, which costs resources, which isn't very efficient. But another thing you can do too is you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse to change the direction, super handy. So for example, I'm going to turn this up and then click here, and that's the way I can get it facing the correct direction. Um, if you have too much stuff clogging a particular belt, like I could make these all going right here instead. The problem is if I have too many doing that, then there's not there's too much stuff on the conveyor belt and I can't get it off in time or whatever. Okay, check the box info. You can go to click on a, an object, go to the question mark. This will tell you stuff about that particular thing you can build. So um, at this point, 
we have, so this guy costs some copper to build, like whatever. Tells you what resources you can grab with this particular drill. Um, we don't even have all these resources on this particular map. Um, and you can also boost objects too, but water. Typically water or oil or cryofluid. Um, there's different liquids you can use, well, and slag, I guess, technically. Um, there's different liquids you can use to put into buildings as well, and they do various things. In this particular case, it makes it go faster. Um, that is very handy if you have a resource you're particularly um, shy on. You can get, like, you can mine, you can drill water, bleh, pump water, and then it will allow you to make things go a little bit faster. So if there's a particular resource you really, really want, that is a very handy thing. So for example, this one is not drilling right now, so I have to connect it. There we go. Boom. So these are all great. Now notice how plugged up this is. I might need to make this a little bit more efficient. Um, so what I might do is do something like this. You know, I don't think that's necessarily the most efficient thing in the world, but um, that should work. And it might have been a thing too, these these drills were filling up with, they can, they can hold a certain amount of, they have a capacity of the ore that's inside them, so it might have just been the fact that it was full, and that's why it was so plugged. Um, so this might be fine. See the stats, conveyors are used to transport items to the core. Normally conveyors cost one copper. Currently in the tutorial anyways, it costs zero. I'm not really sure why that is, so there's no reason not to build a ton of conveyors. So I'm going to build some going to the base so that I can, uh, so I can have stuff going here. Bloop, bloop. We're gonna do is I'm gonna make a whole bunch of copper over here. All right, boom, 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 boom. All right, so now we have a whole ton of copper coming to the base. Um, conveyors are used to transport items, blah, blah, blah. Hold down the mouse, place a line, I already did that. Something else you can do is you can hold down control and do like that. I actually don't really like doing that because like space is usually pretty efficient, or like, yeah, the amount of space you need is really important. Another thing you can do too is you can also um, like hold down control and scroll in and out. Um, but another very important thing, and I talked about this a little bit ago earlier too, is if you just, without holding control, if you just use the scroll wheel while using a conveyor, you can turn it. That's super, this is super handy. I don't think they even talk about this in the tutorial. So once items are in your core, any items that you bring here, that's the resources you can actually spend to build stuff. Uh, not all items can be used for building, for example, coal, which we don't even have on this map, and sand, for example. I think this might be sand? I don't think there's sand actually on this map. Anyways. Coal and scrap cannot be used, cannot be put into the core, instead their resources are used for other things. Um, this is really full. It looks like it's fine though. Defensive structures must be built to repel the enemy. Built place a duro turret to defend your base. Now they're saying to do it near the base, that is not true. The enemies actually spawn from up here and you can actually go over here and notice that it tells you it wants you to leave. What happens is towards, it's like pushing me away, it's like a repulsor field. You know. um, anyways, enemies will spawn up here, and sometimes they have enemy turrets and stuff in here too, so you got to be careful, but because they'll blow you up. What happens is as soon as the wave starts, it has this kind of shockwave thing that goes, pew, spits out, and it'll blow up your guy, so that's what happens. Uh, actually, just floating in here is not a problem. It's if you stay in there, you can die. Uh, what we can do is we can place a bunch of turrets. Now, these cost 11 copper per turret, so you place a big line of them. You know, so I actually have a lot of copper right now, so it's not a big deal. They require copper ammo to shoot. Place a drill near a turret. Lead conveyors to the turret to supply it with copper. Alright, so, we have a bunch of copper around here. Now, uh, there is a couple different ways you can do this. Um, I actually already have a router, which is going to be my best bet right now. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can load ammo into turrets. Um, I purchased a router in the uh, tech tree earlier. In fact, I can actually access that right now. You can see it. Press escape. You can go to the tech tree within a mission and you can unlock more things. Now, the resources you have access to to purchase upgrades are things that you launched with. What that means is at the end of the mission, you can launch items to your whatever, your mission outside, whatever, before you launch. Or yeah, before you even start a mission, this is the resources that you launched at the end of a mission. So, Kind of like Pikmin, for example, whatever, you, you play that game and you get a bunch of stuff and then at the end of the mission you, you have all the stuff. It's like that. Um, so, I what I'm going to do, so normally you don't start off with a router. I purchased a router in the tech tree, which I'd recommend even for the tutorial. Routers are awesome. So check this out. So, you bring a conveyor over to this duo tower while hovering over, you can see the ammo in the bottom right corner. So now it's already full. 
and then now it's plugged up. So what I can do is I can go like this, make this go up. I can move this over, for example. Bloop. The other way they're kind of intending you to do this, I assume anyways, is to do like this, where you bring, you can bring a single conveyor from what, like every single drill has a single conveyor coming from it that goes to each thing. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do it that way. So let me show you a couple tricks. Maybe I'll just, you know what, let's just go over the tech tree. Okay, to talk about all these things. The core, this is where stuff goes into your base. You put all your resources in here. You know, duo towers, they're just a basic turret. They shoot, they cost one copper per shot. You have to load up the duo tower. This does not take it from your core. It takes it from the, the ammo that you put inside each individual one. So this one's full too. Um, the next object we have is the drill, which that's pretty obvious, drill stuff. Conveyor is great. So now we start getting into other conveyor type objects. So a junction, what this does is it makes it so that you can cross paths. So for example, let's say that I want to cross, for whatever reason, I have copper going south. Um, or like this. I mean, actually, let's just show it right here. This will be a great example. Let's say I do like this. I go, boom, this is going to the left now. And I don't want, it's getting plugged up, so I don't want it to do that. Um, but I need, I don't have any more space to the right, so I need to go left. So here's what you can do. You can do a junction. What this does is it makes it so stuff that's going vertically keeps going north and south. Stuff going side to side will keep going side to side. So now I can go like this. So everything that was on this conveyor can now go through and go over here. That's what a junction does. Junctions are super useful. Um, and there's a lot of little tricks you can use with junctions, actually. This is like, this seems like such a basic thing. You're like, oh, all right, okay, that's nice. It's convenient. Like, I don't have to worry about, like, getting these things trapped. I can just go across the way. But mainly, I want to have nice, big, straight stretches. That's fine. Like, junction makes sense, right? Well, it's more complicated than that, actually. Junction, this is one of the most useful um, building options in the entire game. Like, I, it's amazing. Also, you'll notice too, so I'm getting completely blocked off on uh, copper, and that's because the core is actually filled with copper. I'm completely full. I'm going to start real quick. I'm going to pause and actually go get some of these guys. I was talking about junctions anyways, but uh, here's a great thing we can do. So this is another our next resource, which is lead, and I definitely want as much lead as I can possibly get, because lead is awesome. Um, so this way, for example, I tried to get as much lead as I could, or not be inefficient with it. No, no. So I'm already like out of capacity of uh, copper. I can't do anything with it. Um, no. Okay, let's get more lead going to the base because uh, I want as much lead as I can possibly get. Get rid of those. So you can right click on things to destroy them. And right there I was destroying the... Uh, that's probably the most efficient thing I can do there. There. Get this lead going to base. So lead is the next resource I need to unlock more upgrades. So I want to get as much lead as I can. I just wanted to get this started because uh, while we're still talking about stuff. Okay, so now we got lead going to the base too. Bloop, which is awesome. So you can even do this during the tutorial. They don't actually talk about lead in the tutorial, but um, you need it for things. Okay, so that all being said, I was going through this whole explanation to explain routers. Now routers, what they do is they allow you to split things in different directions. What happens is um, you can, it's actually kind of vague, you can, you can use it to just move things back and forth. So I can have three inputs and one output, or two inputs and two outputs, or one up, one input and three outputs. So, okay, check this out. So what happens is it alternates, it takes turns. So it goes forward, then left, then right, forward, left, right, and it just keeps doing that. Routers allow you to do some interesting things though. So this is just the basic thing. You're like, okay, I can use it to split stuff. You can split stuff evenly. You can do things like this though. You can say, okay, what if I want, what if I want one third of my stuff to go one way and I want one third of it to go somewhere else. You can do something like this. And what that'll do is it makes it so stuff going in here because it splits every time. Now you're making it so two thirds of my stuff goes down here and one third goes over to the left. Um, so there's a couple interesting things. This is super basic. If I had more stuff on the conveyor belt, it would make more sense. If this conveyor belt was totally filled, but I wanted to guarantee that some stuff got split off, that'd be a way you could do that. Another cool trick for it, though, is you can do something like this. What happens here, you go boom, boom, with two conveyor belts. Now what happens is, as soon as it comes in here, it spits out to the left. And as soon as it goes into this one, it spits off to the right, uh, half the time. The other half the time, it goes straight. Now, if something comes from this side, the only place it can go is down. What that means is, I place two conveyor belts in here and it evenly distributes it between both of them. So now, there, there's, it should be roughly 50-50 for both these conveyor belts instead of one of them being completely overloaded and the other one being... Let me show that as a better example. Let's do a router right here. So now what's happening is half of it's going here, half of it's going down, but that means that this one's going to be have way more stuff on it. 
see this slowly start trickling away. In fact, let's just do it again, just to make it super, super obvious that this one has hardly anything on it and this one has a ton. Uh, just so that you can see what happens here. So this one has like nothing, it's just trickling, and this one has a whole ton of stuff. And now what's going to happen is as it goes into the router, it's going to split it evenly for both of them. So sometimes that can be nice when you start getting a lot of stuff, you can um, like evenly distribute stuff on your belts a little bit better. But routers are kind of interesting. So here's a fun fact though, as you'll notice though, because you can go from a router to a router. So this allows you to do some interesting things. For example, you can go like this. Instead of like, like okay, this one's full. So I'll go like that, and now I'll fill this guy up with ammo. Great. In the meantime, I'll, I'll just place a bunch of these. This one's empty of ammo, so now I'll rotate this to the right with my scroll wheel. Boom. Now this one's filled up with ammo. Great. But check this out. So these ones are still empty, but remember that a router, it goes into it, and then it tries to go left and right, and it can go into whatever. So now the input of this router is from the left, and it tries to go up, down, and forward, and it splits it evenly. So if you go like this, bloop, it fills up all of these, both of these conveyors are filling up these routers. They're getting filled up with copper, and they try to keep going to the right, but they're also trying to go up and down. So what that means is, you can do something like this. Boom. Does that make sense? So I'm just filling up all these routers with ammo. And then likewise, check this out, now I can go like this. Let's say um, instead I'll have this one going over here instead. Because I already, I already have a conveyor of copper over there. And uh, let's just fill this up with routers. New. I have tons of copper, so I'm not worried about it. Um, in fact, like if I hover over this, I have 3.9k copper. In fact, it's already full. Again, 4k is my limit right now. So these guys are slowly filling up with, with copper. Now, you'll notice, though, this isn't really the most efficient thing in the world, in the sense of uh, that I, like... Like, what's happening is it fills this one up first, then it fills it, it's just slowly, like, expanding outwards. So these ones are going to run out of ammo. So if I get a wave of enemies, and these guys all shoot first, whatever, they'll be out of ammo for a long time, because it'll prioritize filling these two. So you could do something like this. If you want to make sure it's more evenly distributing the ammo, you can do something like that. Boom, boom. So now it evenly splits it, so that... Because if they have at least one ammo, at least they can fire. If they have no ammo, ammo then nothing happens at all. So... What, this, what I just did is it made it so it evenly distributes a little more, so it, it prioritizes these ones and it prioritizes these ones. So it's more evenly distributing the ammo across the board so that um, all of my turrets can be firing at once by the time the next wave comes. So you can sometimes do weird little stuff like that. So routers are really cool. They allow you to do some really interesting things. Um, okay, that's all great. Um, now I'm just so I'm not wasting this copper, I'm going to do like this. This is a router. That's, uh, this was just here when I started the mission. Um, Another thing you can do, too, is you can right-click on objects to delete them. It takes it a second. These ones are really small objects, so it doesn't take very long. Um, but you can right-click on stuff like all these, and you'll steadily uh, salvage them. What that does is it will give you some resources, like there's these all right here, too. I can salvage all this. This is giving me copper. I'm already full on copper, so it doesn't actually do much for me. Uh, but all these things, I can, I can uh, grab them all to get stuff. Now, scrap things on the mission. Actually, I should show that. So, scrap wall. Scrap walls will give you random resources. I think in the, this first mission, it only gives you copper and lead. Ooh, speaking of which, look at all this lead. I didn't even realize this was here. I want as much lead as I can possibly get uh, to spend in the tech tree. Uh, that actually wasn't the greatest thing. Oh, well, it's fine. I don't know that that's the most efficient use of the, uh, the lead veins right there. Oh well. So this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier about trying to get everything onto, uh, oops, that water's too deep. We'll see if this all fits on here. I don't need to do all these shenanigans anymore. I was just messing around earlier. I was just to just show that as a tutorial. Okay. So let's see if this fits. This is already this is plugged up because these were mining for a little bit and then they all they had some capacity in them. So that's why this is so plugged. But this will like be nasty for a second. Um, another thing we can do is we can do something like this, and we can. Uh, what if we did like? Just to make sure that it comes out nice and clean. This is maybe excessive. There we go. Um, this this was unnecessary. I don't really think I needed to do that, but you'll see. Like I, what I did is actually because I was doing this before it ever got here, I made it start being more efficient before it ever arrived. Um, 
because these are all merging together, this should actually be enough flow. This is actually a great example of using the routers this way. Um, because if I had just merged it in, in fact I can just do that real quick just so you can see what I mean. It might end up being too full, and it's not liking it very much. See how full that is? See it's plugging up and now it's backing up here. This is not working very well. So a couple options I could do at this point is I could router this off and make it go to this one, or I could router, like, you don't want to router here because it's already plugging up before that. This is a good example of actually what I was talking about earlier of why you would do something like this. This was a little bit, this is not very efficient. I was just doing it real quick because it was just a, I was just like, eh, I'll just do something real quick just so I can make it work. But here's a, a great example of why I would use the router here. This is doing redundant now at this point. This doesn't matter because I already have the one above. There's no reason to delete that either. I just was doing it to make it look cleaner. Uh, but anyways, notice that this actually is filling up everything great. It's currently plugged a little bit because I had that bottleneck for a second there. Um, so now it's finally cleaning up. But now, see, I have this perfect flow of completely full of lead, and this is why I made two conveyor belts earlier. So I'm totally full on copper now. I'm half full on lead, which is great. But now I'm getting a lot of it. But this is awesome. So what this means, though, is when I finish this mission, I'm going to have all the lead I could want. I'm going to try and get up to 4K, which would be great. Um, if you don't like extra stuff, you can always just right-click it to delete it, just like I showed with the scrap earlier. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to <laughs> actually doing what they told me to do in the mission. Now, normally, by the way, you don't start out with routers. You get that by unlocking the tech tree, which you can do right now, which I already did before I started this mission by paying some of the copper I already had. Um, that's how I got routers. You don't normally start with routers. You have to do those shenanigans with the individual belts like I was doing earlier. You know, just to make this a little bit nicer. Another fun fact you could do, too, um, you could... You could do something like I could router this whole distance. One of the interesting things about routers is because they go both left and right that way, uh, depending on wherever your input is, I could use it to transfer items back and forth. So for example, if I, this is not really the most efficient thing. One of the reasons that routers are a problem is because they take a lot of, they take a lot of resources for one thing. They cost four crop, or no, this one costs one, Never mind. They can normally cost three, I'm really sure. Yeah, they cost three. Just the tutorial, they cost one. I could do something like this. This is kind of weird, but uh, check this out. Bloop. And then, bloop. Uh, make this actually do that. Okay, so what's happening is these routers get all filled with copper, and then they go over here. Um, these, these guys, these conveyor belts are meanwhile going up just like they were before. Now, here's the interesting thing though. So check this out. This is why I did that. So I have this, this chunk of drills going over here, and it goes into a router, right? So what's happening is, if there's room here, it'll come out here. If there's room here, it'll come out here or here. Does that make sense? Because these routers will go left and right at the same time. So even though I have inputs coming from multiple directions, there it goes back and forth. Um, this is super not pretty. I wouldn't normally do it this way. Normally, what would actually be make more sense probably would be... To, the reason this is cool, though, is because the capacity is... In fact, I could even just go one step further and do like this, technically, I guess. Uh, these are all full of copper already. Uh, but anyways, what's interesting about this is because if, like, for, say for example, this is all empty. All these are totally empty. This is totally full, like this, as it is. Then what happens is uh, this, it'll just, this will all unload and go all through here, even though there's no, nothing here yet. And uh, in fact, I could maybe even just show that real quick. Let's kill this. I'll, I'll blow up some of these so you can see it start loading. It loads from both sides. Right now it's loading from here because this is closer, is why it's doing that. But say I go like that. See, it's filling up because I blew up some stuff, but boop. So now it's loading from this side. Which is very interesting. So it's uh, what it does, again, it, what's going to happen is if these ones are low on ammo, it's going to prioritize this one. However, as soon as this runs out of resource, as soon as all of this stuff is unloaded and it's in here, then, uh, and this is empty, now all of a sudden it'll start unloading here. So what's cool about this setup is because I have all these mines and it's it's utilizing everything. Um, however, another interesting thing about, again, it's just like, it, rather than only having this filling up this side and only having this fill up this side, I'm actually using them for both, which is kind of cool. This, this These mines can support this side as well, but rather than like sticking them through one conveyor, in fact, you could even do like this, which is kind of nuts too. So now it's gonna fill up all these routers real quick too. But what's interesting here, this is still bottlenecked by this single router, and this is bottlenecked by this single router. Meanwhile, this will travel at a speed of two, just like how I have these conveyor belts down here. This is There's two completely filled with lead. Um, in the same way, this is completely filled with two whole layers of uh, copper. This is inefficient as far as just essentially having multiple conveyor belts just filled with resources that aren't actually doing anything, so to speak. 
And again, this doesn't necessarily, the only reason that it would go here is if these are empty. Like if these are empty for whatever reason, it'll it'll actually go to these first. It's prioritizing these first because they're closer. Um, so that is kind of a problem. Um, if, uh, anyway, it's a waste of potential resources. I'm not getting it there very efficiently. However, it is very efficient as far as filling it up very quickly once these are empty. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to doing the tutorial stuff at long last. I just wanted, this is a very complicated explanation on routers of showing useful ways to use them, but I just think it's really cool. So I press spacebar, I need time to pause the game. Now this is kind of where the game gets, gets the balance for single player. During single player, you can press spacebar to pause the game whenever you want. You can still queue up actions. So I can do like that. I can change this, the distance, boom, boom, boom. And then I can place whatever, I can do whatever I want, you know. So then unpause, pause again real quick, place a router, uh, do something like this, I don't know. Unpause the game. You know, pause the game again. So this is how single player is balanced, is you can, um, I right clicked to uh, cancel all these and destroy them. Um, this is how single player is balanced, is you can pause all the time. So you just like run around, decide what you're gonna do, queue up a bunch of buildings, and then uh, build them, you know, release to start moving time again. And then what happens is it allows you to be very efficient, even though you're just playing single player within, you know, you have a 10 minute game, you're actually playing it for like, whatever, 40 minutes, and you can be very efficient with your use of resources. Um, again, some of the awkward thing is you can't actually see what resources you have available to you. You can see it this way in the building menu. I wish they had some kind of like pop out menu that showed what your resources were, but sometimes it's kind of hard to tell. Or like, even like they do with some 4X games where it shows like you're currently at, you know, positive 50, copper per second or whatever you know what i mean you can see what your output is just kind of weird because i'm not sure how they would base that is it's based on what's currently popping out of these or what's currently going into the base you know like this for example i have a bunch of copper but it's going to my turrets it's not going to my base so i don't know how you'd show that on a, you know what i mean like it's just kind of weird i guess you'd only show what's going into the base because then it would be show your incoming copper be zero because i'm full you know what i mean so my positive copper is doesn't make any sense maybe it could be infinite temporarily or something i don't know um, anyways, so we'll continue on with this. You can queue buildings, as I was just explaining. Press paste to unpause. Blocks frequently need to be destroyed, so hold down right click to destroy all blocks in a section. Destroy the scrap walls to the left of your base. Oh, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> there was a scrap wall in the way of this conveyor this whole time. Oh well, doesn't matter, I was way full on copper anyways. That was silly of me. Um, in some situations you need to drag stuff directly onto your ship, so you can go like this. And so you just left click on something, you can do this on a mine or whatever, and then just left click to put it on your person. And then you can drag it off of you and put it on something else. Now I think it can only do that for the base, and right there for example it actually just destroyed it because the base is full, but it takes it off of me. Um, I don't think, let me try making a turret, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can load a turret like that. Well let's try it real quick. Oh maybe I can. Sweet. Awesome, now that's cool. Um, that might actually be very useful. There's some mechs and stuff you can make later where you can, they need weird resources like silicone and stuff like that, where it's really awkward to get a conveyor belt like going all the way from your base and then take like from your base all the way to your defense to bring silicone. It's just kind of a pain. Sometimes you have a very limp, like this is, we have a huge amount of space here, but oftentimes you only have a room for like three or four conveyors in a single area and you like, you, you, you have to get this, this lead, you know? So you don't want to have, you don't want to waste all that space. So that could be a problem. But anyways, if you can drag it off of it and just grab silicone or whatever, boop, and then use it to build a mech, that'd be super useful. Um, particular like healing guys or like a drug miner drone or something like that. Multiple items can be withdrawn by tapping and holding. Deposited, deposit items into the block by dragging it from your ship to the destination block. Deposit copper back into your core. Boo, I already did. I have to like get away from the core to do it. Hey, hey, deposit your copper back into your core. Oh, please tell me it's not going to... I think it's not going to let me do it because I am full on copper. Let's do this. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I had to uh, do shenanigans. Okay, so we're currently being attacked. You can tell that an enemy is here because it shows that every enemy makes a little line. And it shows which direction it's coming from, so it's, it's up in this direction to the top right. Now, this is actually going to die like crazy to these towers. Boom. It's, this is way more defense than they're expecting you to have. The enemy approaches. Now you'll notice too, these guys are taking damage in the bottom right corner. You can see their health is low. So this one got attacked. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a way to heal it right now. I could technically just rebuild it. You'll notice this is filling up. It's actually loading from both sides, which is great. So that's a good sign. That's exactly what I was talking about. It's So it's evenly inputting, well not quite evenly, but it's e inputting from both sides. And that's great. That means I'm being more efficient with my use of my 
of my uh, drills. The enemy approaches. Defend the core for two ways. Click left click to shoot. So you can also shoot like this. I don't, is there any more enemies? Anyways, you can shoot. What you want to do is you want to dodge back and forth those strafe so that you don't get attacked. Unfortunately, your attacks are like super... Like, they go all over the place when you're moving with this particular mech, so it's kind of a pain. Um, but you... So it's a pain to accurately aim at something. It doesn't really work very well at all. It's almost got like... It's like, it's like your accuracy is terrible when you're moving with this particular mech. So you're better off like getting far away and then relying on your range, because you attack pretty far. Honestly, you attack farther than the guys. And just so you know, these walls right here, even though I can fly over all this, this does not stop projectiles, so enemies can still shoot me from here. And likewise, they can attack your base. Like, don't think that... You don't want to use this as a wall to defend yourself, because that doesn't really work that way. This is a choke point as far as enemy ground movement. It is not a choke point as far as stopping projectiles from shooting through. So, for example, if, uh, if they're over on this side, and I have turrets, both my turrets can shoot on this across to them, and they can shoot towards my turrets. So you still want to have, you want to place defenses in front of it. That'll make sense in a little bit. So, we're actually ready to launch um, for the tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. And we're done with everything we need to do in this mission. Now, you, you will keep any resources that are currently in your base. Now, because I've been stalling for a long time and explaining all this, the I, I'm already full, completely full on both copper and lead, so we're going to actually be able to spend all that. In, oh yeah, I should show that real quick. So my tech tree, I currently have no launched items. I'm about to end the mission and launch. Normally, you can only do that um, at waves like 10, any, any multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40 for most missions. So here, for example, it says it's wave 5. I can either launch now or I can wait until wave 10. I think for the tutorial, it actually doesn't give me an option. These resources can be used to research new buildings and technology that you've launched. So press the launch button. And this is what I have to do at this point. I've already stalled for a long time, so I'm already full. All right, here we go. We're done with the tutorial. Wahahaha. Okay, so we've launched with everything. My rank was low. I'm actually not even sure why. I guess because I took a long time, probably. Um, I don't know, the, the rank doesn't actually do anything as far as I know. So, I got 4,000 copper, 4,000 lead, which is awesome. So now we're going to unlock a whole bunch of stuff. I've already talked about rat routers really thoroughly. We're going to upgrade everything else that we can. Because now we have tons of resources. I'm sure I can afford just about everything. So first of all, so once we get a router, we can get a distributor. Distributor is an advanced router that splits up to seven other directions. So this means it's it's two by two square. See? So one, two, three, four blocks. So I can have two conveyors going into it, for example, and I can split it six ways. I could have one going in and seven going out, or I could have six going in and two out, or whatever. So it's actually very handy, and there's a lot of times, um, like, I don't know how to explain, like a router, I mean, you notice how a router goes one, two, three, and that's actually because there's only one input is why it's doing that. There's one input, so it splits, it, it takes turns. A distributor will do the same thing, however, it does turns based on the current capacity of the object. Like, distributors are more efficient, so if I have, for example, say I have four conveyors going into it, and I have two router, two conveyors going out, the, the conveyors going out will go as fast as they possibly can. So you notice how like my lead in that last mission was totally full, well my copper too actually, but when the lead was coming together and I distributed it, instead of using two routers side by side, because what happens with the routers, it goes into one router, then it goes into the other router, then it comes out, and likewise it goes in the left router, then it goes into the right router, and then goes down. A distributor doesn't work that way. You just put stuff into it and it spits it out evenly at the same time. Rather than taking turns, it as long as there's capacity inside the distributor, it spits them out at the same speed. So distributors are way more efficient for doing that. Um, so whenever possible, if you if you have the space and or you have multiple, uh, like especially more than two, if you have more than two inputs and they're pretty full, a distributor is way, way better. Like so much better. I can't out express. It's like twice as fast or three times as fast, so use distributors. And they only cost copper and lead, so you do need a little bit of lead currently in your mission in order to even build a distributor. But they're cheap too, they're not very expensive. Sorters. Sorters are very interesting. This is something that people probably won't really think much about at first, but it's very, very handy. Sorts items. If an item matches the selection, it will allowed to pass, otherwise the item is outputted to either the left or right. This works just like a router, except what it does, or much like a junction, I guess is a better way to ex 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 explain. Blech. You click on a sorter, and you choose a, a resource. So if I click on it and I choose copper, for example, what happens is, if I say I have something going from the bottom, and it goes into it, if I click this guy and I select copper, now copper will go straight through. If it's not copper, it acts like a router and it tries to spit it to either the left or right. Just If there's a conveyor touching it, or a router, it'll automatically go into it, is how a sorter works. And it does it to both sides, so you do have to be careful with that. You have to decide like which direction you want it to go. But sorters are very, very handy. Um, That's more so later once you start dealing with scrap, though. Um, next thing, overflow gate. Combination of a splitter and a router only outputs to the left and right if the front path is blocked. So you know how, like, for example, when I had those 
towers, this is actually a very useful way to fill up towers as well instead of using a router, is what happens is it'll go, so again, if it's going from the bottom, it'll go straight in, and then it'll come back the other side. If this is full, and there's, it can't go this way, it'll go either left or right. So you can use this for, um, like the same way I had routers going into all those towers, I can have overflow gates as well. So I can have it going left and right, and then just have a bunch of overflow gates. And as soon as it gets, this one is sort of weird because in that case, for example, if I have it going in through the right, and I just have a whole bunch of overflow gates, duh, 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 then what'll happen is as soon as it gets to the end and, and full, it'll spit up, go up, and then it goes to the next one, and then I have it go up, and then I have it go up, and then I have it go up. I can have this load up uh, turrets as well. So sort of the weird thing about this is it prioritizes the end of the line rather than the front like a router does. Uh, but overflow gates allow you to do things like, for example, when, uh, when stuff is going to the base, and all of those paths were full, I can then tell this to go somewhere else and like, say for example, make another resource. Like say I want to have as much lead as possible, but if I have excess lead, I can turn it, I can burn it and turn it into another resource or something. So overflow gates allow you to do some interesting things. If you are clever with your usage of them, you can do things like load turrets, but you can also create energy um, depending on uh, how well you utilize moving your resources around. Very cool. Bridge conveyor, what it does is it allows you to transport blocks over. This one is very confusing. It's easier to show rather than explain, um, but you can create a bridge across tiles. So you can use this to go over top, like over the top of uh, drills, and you can also use it to go over um, like water or land or other weird things. Uh, very cool. Kind of confusing though. The end acts like a router, so it spits stuff out in every direction, and I'll explain once I get to that point. We have a new turret. This is a scatter. This is an anti-air turret. It does not attack ground at all. Um, and it's loaded with, it also it's just something to note, is all these towers you have multiple um, ammo you can use. I've been using copper so far just because that's what I have access to. Um, scatter requires lead or scrap. Scrap doesn't really have a use, lead can be used in the base to build things. Um, so if you have excess scrap you can use it for ammo, otherwise lead is a little bit easier. Um, one thing to know about lead though is lead is like a little bit, um, has more damage, to, le or, yeah, lead does more damage but scrap hits a wider area. It has more splash damage. Um, it does shoot a little bit faster, but this one shoots um, multiple bullets at once. So I'm not sure which one's better. I think lead's better overall. Copper walls, cheap defensive wall, whatever. Large copper wall, it's for two by two instead. Costs a lot of copper. Uh, but that's the way you put these in front of your towers to defend them. Graphite press, oh yeah. So you load it up with coal. Coal is a new resource and it creates graphite. Costs copper and lead, great. Next thing, pyrite mixer. Pyrotite is, costs a lot of stuff, also costs sand, which is another new resource. You merge all these together, this is complicated how you do this though, and it creates pyrotite. Great. Silicone, another resource. So much stuff. Coal and sand. Boom. Silicone's awesome. Mechanical pump, a cheap pump with slow output but no power consumption. Boom. Can't even get this yet because I don't have metal glass. Combustion generator generates power by burning flammable materials such as coal. So if I put any of these into it, it'll generate power. Power is used to do all kinds of stuff, actually. Power node. This is just a uh, like a electrical line, you know. So you just build a bunch of those. Battery stores power that you've created. Great. Mender. This periodically repairs units in its vicinity. Now this one's a little bit weird to explain. What it does is it does AOE healing. So anything in an area around the mender, it just pulses and heals every several seconds. So every three or four seconds I think it is, it sends out a pulse of healing. So the more menders you have, the faster it will heal. It costs energy per second to run. So this costs 18 power per second. And there's a large mender that I can't purchase yet. Steam generator, that's awesome. Uh, Drog mi miner drone factory. This is, uh, I don't really like these very much, but they what they do is they create drones that will fly around and mine stuff, like how you mine manually mine stuff. Um, I don't really think these are super useful. Um, they actually, they mine for a little bit and then they have to run back to base and deposit it and then they go mine. As far as I know, one thing I wish you could do is, much like a sorter, how you can choose which resource you want to pass through, I wish for a miner drone you could choose what you want it to do. The problem that I have with these guys is they just wander all over the map, like, like I'll have a later resource that I, let's say I want lead, for example. Um, and I'm like really, really hurting for lead. I build some of these and these guys just constantly built mine copper. And that's not what I want them to do, I want them to get lead, that's why I built them, and so it's just irritating. Um, anyways, that looks like everything for this particular one. We're finally going to do the mission for reals. Now what I'm going to be doing though, this is the same mission we just did, and now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to wave 20. Actually, wait, I should show that. I should back up and show that. So before we... let's abandon. Before we start, before you start a mission in the campaign, 
what you want to do is you want to see what the next missions require. So this one, for example, says I need to have unlocked the research for these things, which is great, I already did. And then I need to get to wave 10 in ground zero. This one says I need to get to wave 20 in ground zero, and I also need to research this thing. This required that I had some lead, which is part of what I did in the campaign. So all I'm trying to do is survive until round 20, which is not a big deal. Um, in fact, if I just immediately um, go and... I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. Okay, so like I was saying before, I currently have 79 copper, which isn't much. But if I start mining right away, I'm already getting copper for that. Now, you'll notice conveyors now cost one copper, so that's not great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start building these things again the same way I did before. Yeah. See, now I'm out of copper, so it's steadily building. So, oh, okay, whatever. So I'll keep drilling for a bit. In fact, actually, what I should be doing at this point... Let's uh, start getting some conveyor belts going. There we go. So these start actually mining stuff. Doesn't like it because I'm out of copper. Oh gosh, copper. Oh. So here, for example, I stopped building in the middle of this. So if I left click it, it'll continue building because I right clicked before it was finished. This is what I was talking about in the tutorial. Is I was saying it's, at the beginning, it might be better to just start drilling for a sec just to give you some copper because you don't have any copper input at all. So it's just horrible. So here, I want to be a little bit more careful on my placement of my my conveyors because because like what I've been doing is I've been doing stuff like this like I'll just drag it all the way across like this so I drag all the way to here and now this one is pinging the wrong way so I need to like I can click and drag like this instead what's more efficient is to do something like this so you click go to here and now I'll click and drag up so that's actually pointing the right direction I don't know if you saw that so now this one's not at a weird angle okay great so copper is wonderful the one last copper vein I could do down here is this guy now you'll notice I have three minutes until the next wave. Now, copper is what you use for, like, everything. Um, so I'm going to use a ton of copper, especially for all those. Um, now, last time I was totally just, I left it, the game running the whole time. I wasn't pausing at all. Um, right now, what we're trying to do is be as efficient as possible. So I'm using all my copper on this. Notice that it's, like, gone instantly. I'm using it, or, like, it's stalling. It's taking a little bit to build because I'm out of copper. do something like that actually that would allow me to use that okay it's a little bit weird shaped but that allows me to uh, actually get stuff from it so I might have to build a distributor here soon because um, there's a lot of stuff coming this way Now, unfortunately, the new tower we got is anti-air, so that's not really going to help us as far as uh, getting stuff to the base or whatever. Or, uh, it's not going to help us as far as defending, actually. Um, I think this will be the best way to get all of the, the lead. There we go. So there's only one block that I'm not getting. Actually, you know what I could do? In fact, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So, let's see. I place this here. Boom. And now I can do a bridge. I was saying, talking about this. So let's say this is an input. I think this will work. Actually, let's do it a little bit different just to make sure that you can see it very well. Also, does a bridge, co a bridge cost lead? I don't even have any lead, so I can't build it. All right, we'll get that in a little bit. I'm going to make sure that that functions properly. Um, I don't even have any lead to build a distributor, so I can't do that. Two minutes until the wave. That copper is not very happy right there. I need to probably make another another vein or another conveyor. Well, let's, once it gets once it stops being full, maybe it'll be fine. We'll see. Okay, let's come into the base. It's great. I'm going to start working on defenses because I need to get it going. Um, I got 100 lead or 100 copper. I'm going to show that thing what I was talking about with, with uh, overflow gates instead. Let's see here. Overflow gate. Oh, cost lead. Well, still, I'll, I'll work on that here in a second. I just want to show it because I'm trying to show all the different buildings. Or, like, show. I want to show, like, practical uses of them as soon as possible. And it doesn't really matter which direction you come from with this. If you do like that, and then overflow gate. Once I have lead. Yeah, there we go. See, so, you now it's starting to get into the base at long last. There's no reason to do this instead of, uh... Oh. Well, that doesn't do what I expected it to. Um... Hmm, okay, I know it works this way, though. Pretty sure. What? Maybe it doesn't. Uh, maybe I'm just wrong. Um, anyways, there's a trick for... I think it's you, you combine sorters and routers, or sorters and overflow gates, and it will uh, it'll fill these up faster. It just prioritizes the bottom. Maybe I'm just wrong. 
I'll look at that later. Anyways, instead I'll just do the same way I did it last time. Now, one other difference though. I know the first wave they always come from this side. So now I have a defense tab down here. So I'm going to build large copper walls. So here's the trick here. Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe I should just build over here instead. It's wider. Is what I was thinking. Um, so I do something like this. So I don't have the game pause right now. So I can select very carefully. So I make them zigzag. Um, I think zigzagging is in general superior to just making a massive wall. Oh, copper. Oh, gosh. As soon as I get copper, it instantly uses it all. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe I cancel. Just see what's going on down here. Well, I don't know, it looks fine. See, this is still not very efficient. It's still plugged in up over here. So if I make another whole thing. So here's an example of this. So check this out. So go like this, kill that, place a distributor here instead. Distributor again costs four copper and four lead. So what happens is, notice that it, it works the same way as having two routers. However, it input, there's no delay. So this might not seem like it, but this will increase my copper production quite a bit um, because I'm being more efficient. All those, basically, Half of these drills up here weren't actually producing any copper because they were, uh, it wasn't actually getting to the base at all. So this is way more efficient now. Um, but yes, distributors are awesome because you can just, you can funnel stuff into it like crazy and I can even do more. So if I bring, so for example, if I decide to drill more copper right here, in fact, I'll just do it real quick just to show. New. I'll just show this. The enemy wave's like on its way too, so I'm gonna head over there in a second. I'm just that's part of why I'm pausing, so that I I have the time to think about this. So what's gonna happen is all this copper that's coming out. There's a whole ton of it coming this way. It'll go into this distributor and it'll spit it all out this way. So what's cool about this is it'll this distributor will guarantee that it evenly moves things around this thing. Like I could I could router this instead, and then I could come down here with three of them, and then try and router them together, or like like I could do something. I could do some weird shenanigans. Like I could make it like do like this. I could go. Router, actually, that's bad. That's, let me show it down here. So it comes down here. It's just taking everything off this belt and evenly distributes it amongst both of these. So this would work. That was that's totally fine. Uh, I'm just explaining why a distributor is more is better. There's no reason to have this. I'll just erase it just because it's prettier. There we go. A distributor will do the same thing, but it's way less complicated, and it guarantees like rather than doing these weird shenanigans where if it is like like say one of these belts is just a little bit more full than the other then that method I just did would work. It just would be kind of cumbersome and it's just awkward. A distributor will do the exact same thing, but it does it more efficiently. This wave is going to get totally pwned. I'm going to show attacking these guys because I didn't do it last time. There's only one guy for the first wave. Ugh, try not to die. Well, I didn't kill it in time, but you get the idea. I don't think there's any air at all, but just in case, maybe I should show some anti-air towers just in case. What's my lead look like? Lots. Well, 200 something. Actually, I should maybe I should do that. Right, I was going to show this earlier. Now that I have lead, I can do this. So a bridge. So we go like this. All right, and then we go like that. So what happens is now this is going to drill. Well, this both of these are going to drill. They're going to go. They're going to go into this input. It takes it over the drill and spits it over here. So now I can do something like this. Okay. So what that means is that single little chunk of lead right here that I couldn't reach, now it's it's actually mining that one. I think there's one right here or something that I'm covering up now too, but so we'll see if that works. If that plugs up, I'll come back and look at it. Um, there's a bunch more lead over here. This, These guys all... This is juicy. I need this. I need this in my life. Let me see if, the, let me see if this does anything. Let's see if anything pops off of this bridge, just because I'm curious. Yeah. So it is. So these four are currently using this, which is great. Um, that's what I was hoping for. So this input does count. Great. So these four are spitting it out right here. Um, uh, now we can delete all this real quick to get resources. Thinking what I should do. Let's actually do this. Boom. Distributor. Just to make super sure that this will not have any problems. And then distributor. Boom. So I keep pausing just because that's a good habit to be in. Like as long as I'm looking around at stuff anyways, I pause and then unpause as it so this is a great example too of a junction. Now, this doesn't really matter. I could, there's two ways to do this. I can either go like this, I can just move this, just like that, and then just make it two. Or if it was still like this, and I'm like, oh no, what am I gonna do? Um, here's the other way you can do that, is you can create that and then junction. So now what's gonna happen is stuff that comes down here will then go to the left instead. So that's how I have it right now, which is fine. Um, either one of those ways works. Um, I'm just explaining there's multiple ways to do that. Um, in particular, like one of the reasons why you would want to use a junction is if, like, say, 
let's say this is really narrow and it's only like two wide or even but it's like offset like see how this is see how this corridor kind of like curves a little bit to the left if this was super super narrow instead and you don't really have room and you have say you have something nuts like this and you're like you're like oh gosh now i have all this i have this land that like juts out right here and it's in the way so how am i going to get it over here you can just be like bloop, and then you can junction across multiple ones like that and then you can have it continue going off to the left so i could do something like this there's no reason for me to do that right now but i just wanted to show um so i'm not going to do that but i just wanted to explain real quick you know let's just uh, just to make sure that we're not wasting that lead lead's more valuable than copper to me at the moment i did not finish doing this um oops not that one so by uh, right clicking it what you do is i think you get back half the resources something like that Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so that'll fill up all that, which is great. Um, these, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to destroy all this. Uh, the reason being, because what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to completely remove all this. Bloop. Okay, so now what I did is I, because I walled this off, the enemies can only go this way. Now, one of the reasons I was talking earlier about how I think that a... Um, Rather than building a solid wall, I think a zigzag, like making them zigzag back and forth is superior. Like you could just have a whole bunch of walls, just make this, make it three deep or something like that. As long as whatever path is the closest path to get to the base. So for example, currently the only free path is right here. So they're all gonna come this way, all the ground units. But if for whatever reason, um, in fact, let me do this too real quick. And I'll explain what I'm doing here in a moment. Oh, that's bad. Actually, I have to have a path for them. Enemies need to have a path. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make scatter shots here. These are anti-air. I don't even think there is air in this map. All I'm trying to do is get to wave 20, by the way. So I'm like, I'm doing great. I right-clicked there on accident, so I had to... It canceled my selection. So if you do that accidentally, by the way, so like check this out, I accidentally right click at some point to go do something. I'm like, oh no, because when you're building it, it's like you're preoccupied, you move really slow and stuff. So if I'm like in the middle of doing this and I'm like, oh gosh, run away, right click, move away, go back to whatever you're doing, you come back and you're like, what's going on? This is actually partially used the resources. It's used half of whatever it costs. So this costs 85 copper. Wow, it costs a lot of copper. All right, maybe I need it. Fine, fine. I didn't want to build any more copper. Maybe I need to though. Actually, this is really full. Do I need a distributor again? I suppose I should. All right, fine. So, check this out. We'll go. Actually, no, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Boom, boom. Okay. So now, that's actually not. No, that's not going to do what I wanted to do. Okay, let's move this over a little bit. Boom. And distributor, boom. So we go poof. Um, boom. 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 All right. Okay, so what I just did is I moved everything over, so now I can have... I can have one more input and one more output. Is what I just did. Uh, this is a great example of what I was talking about with distributors too. So I, even though I'm like I could have built more distributors and done a whole bunch of shenanigans with routers and stuff like that, I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to use that same router I've already got. I'm pausing a lot, so I'm not really moving a lot of time right now. It doesn't really matter. This mission is super chill, so I'm not worried about it. But uh, just the principle of the thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie off of the copper I already have at the defense. So what this is going to be a good use of a good example of overflow gates. All right, let's say I need to go past all this. Let's kill all these real quick. Let's uh, junction off of this lead so I can pass by it. Bloop. Let's say overflow gate right here. And then this will actually go down and around. This is kind of an awkward place, but the reason I'm doing it is because it's so close to these other, these other mines. If there's too much copper inside of this defense. If these routers are completely... Oh, actually, that's kind of weird right there. This router, this router is spitting it down. If I go like that, yeah, that works. Because this, this router is going to fill up this turret anyways. So that's fine. That solves that problem. What was happening is I was splitting 
I was splitting everything that went into here going down this path. That's not what I want to do. I want it to fill this all up first, and then if it's full, it goes out this way. So now what's going to happen is, if the routers are totally full, if this can't go forward, the overflow gate will spit it off to the left. So then it takes it from here, takes it around. So now, if... So like, notice that it's full now. Like, these guys should all be full of ammo. Oh, they're not. Ugh. These don't even have any ammo. These don't have any either. The routers should be filling up. Did something break with them? Sometimes they, they do just screw up, and they don't work properly. Ah. I'll come back to this. I want this to fill up all my turrets first. I don't know what's going on. Okay, this is filling up now. Alright, you know what I'll do instead? Let's go like this. I'll just, actually, I'll just show it for a second so it goes forward. If forward is full, now it goes to the, to the right. We're gonna do that. Boom. Duo towers. Um, it shouldn't go over here at all unless this is full. So, these all should be great now. It should be filling up with stuff slowly. Yes, this is steadily filling up with ammo. Very slowly. This isn't a lot of input, though, either. Go like this. We'll go through here, too. This might be a little bit much. It might not be able to handle this very well. That's sort of a way you could do that. So if this if this was instead... Uh, this is, there isn't room for this to work, but this is a great example, I guess, of that working. So what it's doing is it's, it's coming out here and here. So it goes up. This is an overflow gate. It says, hey, if this is full, spit it out to the right. This one says, if it's full here, go off to the right. And there's a junction here, so it makes this stuff allow to pass through this way and this way. Um, so what's cool about that is it's, uh, if I were, if this was, I don't have room here, but if instead this was going over here to the left, I could have more routers like boom, boom. And I could have it input this left one. If I had more room, I could make this input right here instead. So the reason that's cool is it more evenly distribute. That's what I was trying to do earlier. It could more evenly distribute everything. And so I'm using a distributor for that instead. It's taking everything from here and here and putting it... It has three inputs for the distributor and has two outputs. It's actually probably bottlenecking a little bit over here because it can't feed fast enough. Um, but it's pretty good though. You'll see like this. these are all producing relatively efficiently actually. And, so here's what's happening too, as soon as these get all completely filled, then one conveyor belt full of copper will go back to the base, is what I did. So that's an overflow gate, and it goes to this distributor, goes into this third output input, and the distributor evenly distributes it amongst three outputs. Yeah, three, there's four actually. It's like four inputs, technically five if you count this as two, but it doesn't really count. You can do this even. Oh, really? That's going down, apparently. Now it's going right. There we go. Oh, that was probably screwing it up. Actually, that's a good point. Check this out. So this was going down before. It was spitting it out of this and then going back in because it's going down next to this. So that's actually a problem. Yep, see, look at that. It's coming out of the distributor here. So that's bad. That's actually really bad. I'm glad I noticed that, actually. Just because, just for the reason of showing it. I'm just trying to explain how the game works. Um, but yeah, that was great. See, like, now this is totally full, now it's just going to be distributing like crazy. It's going to plug up, though, because it's only one output. I'd almost need another whole conveyor to adequately use my uh, copper properly. Although I'm out of inputs on this particular distributor. Alright, the last thing I wanted to show, so we're at wave 5 right now. Um, and I will skip through waves here in a little bit. I just wanted to continue explaining how these work. I'm making some anti-air towers. I don't even think there is anti-air on this, or air t enemies on this particular mission. What I wanted to show is that these use a couple different ammo types. I'm going to go ahead and grab scrap for this, and I think what I'm going to do... New content unlocked. I can't even use scraps. So I don't know why it cares so much by showing me an achievement. <laughs> mm. I just wasn't really planning on using scrap originally, and now I am, so... I wasn't worried about it before. Boop. So I think I've used every, every ounce of scrap veins that are here. Um, and I am going, like, way more in-depth. You normally don't even have this extra technology for this map. Um, the reason I'm doing this is doing this insane is to show all the stuff though. I just want to show a bunch of di different techniques and explain different mechanics of how the game works. Uh, actually, I don't want to touch that. I don't want to touch that distributor. If I moved it over and then went up, then it would try and spit out lead onto this line. I don't want it to do that. So I'm taking scrap. Now scrap is... Uh, the reason I'm doing that is I actually would normally just use lead. And then I would do the same thing I did over here where I overflow my copper to the base. I would use lead in my defense here for these scatters, but um, instead, I notice it says no lead on it. That's because lead is just the first thing listed. It just means that it has no ammo currently loaded inside, but when I hover over this, it shows lead. The little line going through it, it alternates between lead and scrap there in the bottom right corner, you can see. 
So now it's going to start loading up a scrap. Um, scrap is just like chunks of metal. It can be melted into um, slag, and slag has other uses as well. There's more scrap over here. I'm going to go ahead and just grab it just to show. This is What I'm doing right here is way overkill. I can totally just skip through all these waves and finish the mission. Uh, I just wanted to show as much different techniques and stuff as I could. And I don't claim to be a master of this game at all either. I've played... I'm like... I'm most of the way through the game, I'm at, on the final missions of the campaign right now with my friends. Uh, but I just thought I would... I'm enjoying this so much that I wanted to record some walkthroughs of it. Because I'm enjoying it and it's fun. I think it's interesting. It, it makes you think. Like, it's a... Uh... Actually, here's a good example, too, of using a bridge. So, here's the stupid thing. If you have something like this, I'm kind of being wasteful with my... Some of my stuff here. Now... So I made a bridge across this, it's going to go across, do a junction. I really wish there was a... Oh, I don't know what it's called, hotkeys? I wish I could assign hotkeys, like I could make one be a regular conveyor, and two be a titanium conveyor, or three be a junction, or whatever. I wish I could just choose some of these things and then make a pneumatic drill number five, or whatever. I wish I could just assign numbers to these things. I hear that you can in Factorio, uh, which I might end up trying that sort of soon, too. So I'm totally full on ammo now, so there wasn't any reason to make all that, but I just wanted to show. This would be a way that you could increase your feed of scrap. Um, so this is all anti-air. As long as air comes this way, then I'd be fine. Enemies are coming, we're going to show all this too real quick. So notice that they can hit me here, but you can hide behind the wall and fire them. So they hit the wall first. They're going to blow up so fast. Boom. This all fills up with copper, and it fills up all the way across too. And now it's already full, so now it goes off to the right, but the right's already full too because the base is full. I could use more lead in the base, but I have 3k already, so I'm probably pretty close to full anyways. Now check this out. I can skip missions, or skip waves, skip to the next wave. Oops. I was in the enemy field as it, it does that pulse thing right as they spawn. So I happened to be in it right as that happened. Now, as I was saying earlier, uh, you can build just a giant wall or multiple walls of these things. However, the enemies will always take the closest path. Whatever is the closest path is to, the, to your base, that is the route they will take. So what I did here is I made it so the only path is this one because there's a hole they can walk through. Now, if I blocked it off entirely, they would just take whatever one is the closest path. So if I make... You could do that, though, by making like this wall. You can make it like go... Kind of like how I have it zigzag here. You can make the wall go like way over here. So that if they were to walk here and then you block it off or something, whatever. So whatever the path they'd have to take, if it's a longer path that they have to walk on, then they will prioritize where your defense is. And that's a way you can do that. It's kind of weird shenanigans that way. So if you wanted to build a giant wall and just have a whole bunch of these things, that's great. I generally think the zigzaggy pattern like this is superior. So you make them have to weave back and forth. And the reason for that is because if they just hold still, like if they come straight for your defense and they just start attacking, they all focus fire one single block. So this blows up every single time. So meanwhile, this one's about to break after so many waves. Um, but what happens is because they're moving right to left like this and they're working their way over here and then they get in here and they start attacking these ones, they kind of evenly distribute the damage. So it kind of depends on what towers you're using, especially if you're using a mender, like I was explaining in the tech tree earlier. A mender evenly distributes all of, or evenly distributes healing um, over the course of. Uh, like it does, in fact, I have tons of copper, so there's no reason not to do this, I guess. I can just repair all these, or replace them all. I can't just build over top of them, can I? No. Anyways, if you throw a couple menders in here, because menders just have these pulses, poof, 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 and they do an AOE, actually very similar to this, this area, like this duo turrets, they just go poof, and do pulses of healing. Um, I think it's way more efficient to zigzag back and forth because the enemies more evenly distribute the damage, and as a result, they don't, um, they don't destroy everything. So I can launch at wave 10. That's all great. However, remember when I was back in the main, I can't show it right now, in the campaign like overview, that I, if you said wave 20, you unlocked the other mission. I can't skip. If you skip now, you won't be able to launch. So I can stall. So you can stall for as long as you want. You have a timer here. I can stall. And then I could launch once my resources are full. That would be one reason why you'd want to wait. You'd wait for all your resources to get here, right? In this mission, I have very low capacity and I only have two resources to worry about, so I got it really fast. But later, when you have silicone and graphite and titanium and plastanium and stuff like that, it's just like you need as much uh, resources as possible. So you want to stall to the last second to do it. I'm actually going to keep skipping waves because I'm full on everything and I need to get to wave 20. As far as... So I've unlocked the first zone, which is Frozen Forest. And then there's the other one off to the left, which I think is... It's not salt fields, I can't remember what it's called. So here's an air, air unit. Boom, but I built some scatterers so they took care of that. Maybe I should build some air over here, just just in case. In fact, if I place it like this, 
This is kind of a fun fact. So by placing a tower next to a drill, it will automatically fill up the tower. But anyways, this is cool because what happens is if you have a tower next to a drill, it'll prioritize filling the tower and then it will start going on the conveyor, I think. Maybe it alternates back and forth just like a router does. I'm actually not entirely sure how it decides. But regardless, these are all filled with ammo now, all five of these. Um, and I went ahead and just routed these real quick just to make some more. So in case any air units come through here, these guys, they actually have a really far range. So these ones will take care of any that come through here. And these ones will take care of any that go over to the far left. Uh, in fact, what's the range on this? Like, this will kill everything way over here. No ammo. Full on ammo. Last one. Great. My, t my walls are getting pretty hurt. Let's go ahead and tell the next one to go. In the meantime, I will build these. Cost copper. I'm not worried about it. I have so much copper input. In fact, I can hover over this and see. It says I already have 4K. It's not actually 4K. It's probably 3,900 or something. You can help attack too, I guess. Next. So I can just wait for these to blow up. It doesn't really matter too much. There's a bunch of air. They totally died. <laughs> Boom. This is way more scatterers than you need. So normally on this mission, here's what happens is because I got lead in the tutorial, like they don't actually tell you to get lead in the tutorial. Because I got lead, I have access to scatterers. Again, like I was explaining when I was looking at the tech tree is the things you can unlock are they they cost in the tech tree the same things that they you can't even see it right here. But this one, for example, costs titanium. So I need titanium, but it also costs titanium to build. Build cost, 100 titanium. Because normally in the tutorial, they don't tell you to get lead, so I wouldn't even have lead. So air would be a real problem for me if I only had access to copper, because I can't even build... These duo turrets do not attack air. So if I didn't um, do that, I would only be able to access the first mission, the frozen forest, whatever. Because if I kept having to deal with air, it would be a real problem for me. I'd really struggle with that. Because I only had access to copper stuff before. Like, because I can get lead in this mission, but unless you launch with lead, you don't have anything to spend in the tech tree, because only launched items actually give you uh, spendable stuff in the tech tree. But yeah, anyways, because I got lead in the tutorial, I have lead for these turrets, and as a result, I can unlock both of the next missions. That's part of why I did that. Um, so yeah, so I'm getting lead for all this stuff. I just didn't see that there's no reason to play this mission once for the tutorial, then play it twice. Like, I play it the second time, I get copper and lead, and then I have to launch at wave 10, just to unlock scatter shots so that I can last until wave 20 is just silly. So instead I just got it during the tutorial. That's why I did it in that order. So they're kind of blowing up my t my walls now uh, a little bit, but it's okay. I have, again, this just costs copper. Like it doesn't matter. Who cares if they blow up copper? I'm gonna blow up this one too because it's getting kind of low health. So for now, this is great. I've, I don't have any healing towers yet. Once I do, then I'll be able to keep my walls alive. Um, this is fine though. So there's actually, I've been, I totally skipped over the tier one walls, by the way. There's just one block uh, copper t copper walls as well. They're really bad. I'm not building them because I'm building the higher tier ones. Boom. Boom. So these ones are just a single block, but they don't have a lot of health. I actually don't even know how much health they have. What if they say in their description? Uh, this says nothing. Oh, health 128, or 2000, 1280. So it's 320. Um, I guess it's about the same, huh? That's not too bad. Like, yeah, I was just trying to decide if it would be more efficient to have th four of these versus, that's what I was mulling about. But this has more health total, so I think it will, uh, actually, let's see if there's, uh, air units too, by the way. Looks like not, just more of these guys. I do feel like the defense aspect of this game is a little bit, like, meh. You just need to make sure you have enough towers, but a lot of the time, like, these units are all the same. This is, of course, the earlier missions. There is new types of enemies that you fight against in upcoming missions. Okay, so check it out. At this point, I'm I'm ready to launch, and it's already wave 20, which is what I needed to unlock the next level. So, I'm going to go ahead and launch um, here in a second. If, if instead I was still getting lead, I would probably wait, because I have three minutes until the next wave anyways. So I could wait for three whole minutes for resources to come to my base. Now that, of course, seems overkill for this, but again, I'm on the earlier missions. I have no resources at all, and everything's really cheap. It doesn't matter. But for later, when I'm starting to get um, like resources that are trickling in, I, I only have a single conveyor, and it's barely full, full at all, um, it makes a big difference. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch. We're done with this mission. Woohoo! Wave 20. All right, new high score, rank SS. See, this one I got a good score. I don't know why the tutorial I got C minus, whatever. So notice these are flashing now in the campaign. And as I was saying, this one requires wave 10 completed in ground zero, which is the mission we just played. Unlock. 
Oh yeah, Frozen Forest. And I can also unlock this guy. It requires wave 20. Unlock. Oh yeah. So you'll notice too, if I click on these two, they say what available resources they have. This one said it, the one I just was on, Ground Zero, says it has copper, lead, and scrap. And then also another fun fact too, after you have completed a mission, enough, done enough waves, you can configure your loadout. What that means is what resources you're starting with when you launch the mission. What that means is you're taking all of your launched items, the, mission, the stuff you're using to spend on your tech tree, and you can start the mission consuming some of these resources. So I could go in here and I could be like configure loadout and I could change this to whatever amount I want. I could change it to 1000. Oops. Boom, and I can start with a thousand copper, which is kind of cool because what that means is you can do some fun things. Like you can start with a whole bunch of copper and lead and stuff. By the way, I think I, is there one more research I haven't gotten yet? I think I can get pneumatic drills even. Oh no, wait, pneumatic takes graphite, doesn't it? Yeah, pneumatic drill takes graphite. Yeah, okay, so that's why I don't have that. So in order to get graphite, I need, I need sand, I think it is. So graphite. No, just coal. Okay. Anyway, so graphite is the next tech I really need. Um, frozen forest does not have does not have that, but it does have coal. Meanwhile, desert has sand and coal. It's great. Oh, no, so, no, right. Yeah, it takes coal to make graphite. Yeah. So either one of these I can make that. This one would also allow me to get silicone. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here. This has been a nice long video. I will try and fast forward through some of it. This mission, I am actually surprised that I had enough to say. Uh, what I'm planning to do for this whole guide is I'm going to be just fast forwarding a lot. Like, I'm going to pause and, like, decide where I'm going to build stuff. And I might talk a little bit about what I'm going to build. Like, maybe I'll talk about it as the game's paused. I'll pause the game with Spacebar, and I'll build stuff, and I'll, like, decide where I'm going to go. Uh, but otherwise, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to post-edit. I'm going to fast forward a lot of the, like the stuff where not a lot's happening so where i'm building stuff like i'll talk about what i'm planning to do and then i'll just do it and i'll just fast forward through me building everything so it's just like and so that way you're not sitting through an hour of footage you instead you're just getting the essentials all right so that was ground zero and the tutorial which is essentially the same map actually um and we have copper and lead now we're moving on to the next two levels we're just do frozen forest first because that one was unlocked at wave 10 and then Desert Waste is the next most difficult one. So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, my name is Caleb Simpson. If you enjoyed this, be sure to follow here on YouTube. And I also stream on Twitch every a couple times a week or whatever. Just depends on what I'm into. Um, I usually play a lot of Legend of Zelda games, but I play a lot of other things too. I'm primarily known for making walkthroughs, but I do make Let's Plays as well. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Join me for the next video where we will continue with Frozen Forest.